In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how I fit arrowheads like this to their shafts and fletch them. Have you noticed how some of mankind's deadliest creations are also the most beautiful? These are hand-forged reproductions of medieval arrowheads, the original and lethal warhead. But first, a massive thank you to professional arrowsmith Will Sherman for making me these superb medieval arrows, tipped with his own hand-forged heads. And also to Matt Lukes for making me and sending all the way from Canada these wonderful hand-forged heads also. It'll be these I use to show you how I mount them to the shaft. I've already posted a detailed video about how I put together medieval style arrows. It's linked up there in the corner if you want to check that out. I'll be using clips from that video to illustrate the process as I work through mounting arrowheads like this on some new shafts. So I'd like the arrows that I'm going to build to complement these made for me by Will Sherman. These are 30 inch long medieval style arrows with reinforced knock, long low fletches, spiral bound with red silk and tipped with a Type 10 hand-forged head. To make up these four arrows, I shall be using two 3 8 inch parallel shafts and two half inch tapered shafts. So let's have a quick roundup of the tools and materials I shall be using to make up these four arrows. I spiral bind the fletches normally using this red silk, but I've also used sewing thread. It's a little coarser, but does an excellent job. These are the adhesives I shall be using. This one is for the fletches and this one for the arrowheads. If you're making up your own arrows, make sure you purchase the shafts from a reliable supplier and ensure that they are the correct diameter, material, spine and length for the bow that you're going to use. I shall be cutting the fletches from full length feathers using two different techniques. Way number one, freehand using shears. Way number two, I shall use a jig and a rotary cutter. If you intend to use a rotary cutter and a jig to shape your fletches, make sure you use one of these. It's a self-healing mat. I should be shouldering and tapering the shaft for the arrowhead using just a knife. I should be reinforcing the knocks of these arrows with a sliver of buffalo horn. The slot will be cut with a pull saw. If your arrows are for use on bows in excess of a 100 pound draw weight, then strengthening the knock is really vital. It avoids the string splitting the arrow upon loose. But it's a purely aesthetic feature if the arrows are for use on low draw weight bows. It looks great, but it's not absolutely essential. Time for a quick hack. If you've not got any of this buffalo horn to reinforce the knocks, you can use an old credit card. It does just the same job. Now, if you've made arrows like this before, you've almost certainly used a fletching jig to align the fletches and hold them in place whilst the adhesive sets. But as you can see, you can't do that with these long eight inch medieval style fletches. They're way too long for most standard jigs. You can make one yourself that accommodates such long flights or alternatively do as I do and simply mount them by eye and hand. But if you've not gone freehand before, here's a little hack that might help you align the fletches. This is a plastic milk bottle top with a hole board in the centre and 120 degree spaces marked in felt tip pen. Slide it on the shaft and it helps you draw pencil marks upon which to mount your feathers. My first job is to cut down the arrow shafts to length and I measure 30 inches from the pit of the knock groove to the shoulder of the arrowhead. But be careful that you don't cut the shafts too short. You must allow for the knock and you must allow for the taper of the arrowhead. And the tapers can vary depending on the head you're fitting. Notice the difference between the cone taper length on these two arrowheads. I'll make up three arrows using the buffalo horn as a strengthener and one using a piece of credit card just to show you what it looks like. The reinforcing slot is cut in line with the grain to a depth of two inches and the width of the saw blade. 
So I've used two part epoxy adhesive to glue the strips into place. It's a good idea also to clamp these tightly whilst they set. So whilst those dry, it takes about 30 to 40 minutes for it to be completely set. I'm going to cut the feather fletchings using a feather jig. Whilst I'm doing that, here's a few clips from the previous video showing you the technique of feather cutting using a template. So that's my fletches all cut. Notice, however, that it's got a trailing edge, whereas this template results in a flat edge. If using a template like this, but you want a result like this, simply cut the quill rather than cutting straight across the end of the feather, as this template can cause you to do. Now, I quite like using feather jigs because I can achieve a consistency that way that I can't manage otherwise. But this is by no means the only way to fletch an arrow. It can be done freehand by simply binding the full feathers straight onto the shafts and then cutting the shape afterwards. I'm not especially good at it, but this, in broad outline, is the technique. If you're going to attempt this method, you might find using a darning needle held backwards is really useful for parting the barbs next to the quill. One by one, trap each fletch under the thread and then bind your way along the entire length. At the end, trim to the desired shape with shears. And there you have a completely hand-fletched arrow. So the adhesive is now set. The next job is to carefully file down the buffalo horn, or indeed the credit card insert, and blend it in to the arrow shaft. And just for comparison side by side, here's the credit card version. This one has two layers of card, the next job is to cut the knock in the end of the arrow. To do this, I use a tile saw. I cut the knocks to a depth of about nine mm three eighths of an inch. A little bit of a hack here. If you've not got a vise in which to grip the arrow shaft, drill a hole in a work surface, pop the arrow through, and then with your hand, you'll find you can lock the shaft solid or you cut the knock. When the basic knock is cut, I then use sandpaper to shape and round the end of the arrow and to smooth out the knock groove. So that's the position of the fletches marked on the arrow shaft. The end of the fletch will be about 40 millimetres away from the knock end, around about one and a half inches. And by the way, don't forget to make one of your fletch guidelines line up with the knock strengthener. That will give you your cock feather. Today I'm using this fast setting gel to fix the fletches to the shaft. If you're new to working freehand, you might find this bit easier if you clamp the arrow shaft to a work surface. I start by fixing the end of each feather to the shaft using some of the gel. Be careful, if you get this on your fingers, you can very easily stick to the arrow shaft and the feather. Once the adhesive is set, I then work my way down the feathers, applying spots of glue and securing the feather into place.
So that's this arrow fletched. And if you wanted to, you could call it a day there. Fit the head and you've got an arrow. But there's something missing. And that something is the thing that gives these arrows that medieval look. And it's the spiral binding on the fletches. That's our next job. The aim is to get about five to six turns per inch. That is per 25 millimeters in all the way up the fletches. Spiral binding fletches is something you'll either find very therapeutic or it'll drive you nuts. We start work at this end and the first job is to make five to ten turns of silk around the shaft. The aim is to trap the start of the thread under one of the turns and then you can carry on binding. At each turn use the thread to part the barbs of the fletch as gradually you work your way along the alley. When you reach the end of the binding, make 10 to 20 more turns and then seal it with a dob of glue. So that's my four arrows now fletched and bound. Time to fit the arrowheads. Arrowheads like this need a shouldered taper so that the back of the head lies flush with the shaft. I create the shoulder by rolling the arrow shaft against a knife blade. Then I form the taper with the blade. Remember that arrowheads like this are forged by rolling hot metal into a cone. They're consistent but not identical, so each shaft has to be matched to each arrowhead. When you've established your basic taper, you can refine it with a file. As you refine the taper, keep fitting the head until you get a tight and straight fit. When they're all done, it's time to clean the arrowhead socket and glue them on. For stubborn grime, I sometimes use a needle file to clean inside the socket. After that, I degrease the inside of the socket using a solvent. As you glue them on, make sure the arrowheads are squarely fitted to the shaft. When the adhesive is set and the head is secure, it's time to finish the arrow. And the first job is to apply several coats of varnish in between the fletches onto the spiral binding. That's what I'm going to do next. So that's how I mount medieval style hand forged arrowheads and of course how I fletch the shafts as well. Thanks once again to Matt Lukes for sending me these awesome arrowheads. If you like content like this please do consider subscribing. Hit the bell button below if you'd like notifications of my next upload. Thanks again all for watching and I'll see you next time.